you got to realize that your person is, isn't just this one entity that exists and no, that's right. out of it. There's every time you apply for you know a Save on Foods card or a credit card or a voter registration or a driver's license. Those are creating different persons. Like splitting no, it almost. It's, it's, well, no, it's, different it's not ones, one core different thing. Ones. Different contracts. You're, you're, different you contracts. are giving life to these different contracts. Different associations. And it's like having different game pieces in different games. So yeah. here you're playing Monopoly, here you're playing Risk, here you're playing whatever, right? Yeah. And you're creating these different persons. And that's why you know people carry in their wallet their whole identity. It's all their different contracts. Yes. It's all the evidence. And that's why they want to tie it all in with that very chip, because yeah. then it's all tied into one thing, and then your entire... Uh, Identity it's centralized. is centralized, which they have control over. One world government, that's what they yeah. want. The whole thing is to get to. Yeah, well, to well, the, yeah. well, the other thing, too, is that, see, like, there is no separation from me and the government. The government, or there is, but the government works for me. That's right. right? Uh, so yeah. it's like, is, is if I give the government the power to, say, have all this authority over me, then I'm acting like a child. Yes. But the government doesn't have that authority mm -hmm. over me. You and can respond for yourself. As long as I don't give them that, then yeah. to me there's no... See, I'm the master. Yes. There's no serving two masters. There's no... There's no, nothing like Standing that. Standing up for yourself. I'm the master. Standing. So it serves yeah. me. Right? And that's the way I look at it. So so for me, that's just... Uh, for me, it's like understanding that and wherein my my authority or my power lies. So like the person for me, it's, I'm not a person. I have a person. I can utilize it in any way I see fit. have many persons. Um, I think that part of, you know, part of the idea of a notice and, and telling the government this stuff is that we're letting them know that we're not the children anymore. Yeah. Thank you for taking care of us when we were children. We've exactly. grown up. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't, I don't see anything that exists today existing outside of universal law or anything like that. So everything works. Unfortunately, there's pirates that have taken over the ship. That's it. Right. And so the way I see it is that you know the pirates have taken over, and so we need to you know get rid of get rid of the pirates, and then we take over. Take over our, our take the over concept the of society again. is a very good thing, and a lot of people have, uh, like I've mentioned, uh, the problem with having an understanding. They'll say, "Do you understand these rights?" And then people say, "Oh, any understanding now is bad." So they'll try claiming, "Ooh, well, my standing is this." which doesn't provide you protection. It's like building a tent and then standing on top of it. How does that protect you? Mm -hmm. Having an understanding is not a bad thing. Having an understanding foisted upon you by deception is. Certainly. What is the best way to approach a situation of conflict with the current law society, like polices, judges, as a corporate fiction and as a free man? As What's a corporate the, fiction, do what they tell you to do. As a free man, tell them no, unless they prove that they have an that you have an obligation to fulfill their uh, their demands, which you don't. And recognize and that when the reason they have to see your ID is because the ID is the proof of a contract to follow yeah. the obligations. So, you know, if if you're driving a car and you're carrying a license, and they ask you to to show it to them because it's not really yours, right? Mm -hmm. It says it's the property of the issuing agency yeah. because it, it's carrying proof that this person, right, with this this likeness, yes. signed a contract saying I will agree to follow the rules of the motor vehicle. Do you, do you know what do you know what a person is? Yeah, you. I'm not a person. Oh, what's a person? What's a person? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And the best way any any time you're dealing with conflict, I think, especially with cops. What I found uh, works best is say to them, God's peace to you, good sir. God's peace to you, good sir. Thank you, I appreciate that. God's peace to you, good yep. sir. Start off right with that. Yep. You start getting there. They've got two needles. you got to get their needles into the green. If either one gets into the red, you're going to get beat up. Yeah. And their needles generally hover in the orange anyway, so they're just looking for a reason for it to jump into the, into the red. Yeah. And that is their own safety and their own uh, dignity are being respected. That's right, doing their, do their job. Now, bear in mind you're dealing with a peace officer. If the very first thing out of your mouth is, God's peace to you, good sir, then you end up in court, a place for people with conflict, and it comes out that the very first thing you said to this peace officer was God's peace. Well, then how did the, the conflict develop? He's a peace officer. He is supposed to preserve and maintain the peace first. He's made an oath. Yeah. Yeah. So that's generally what I suggest to, to people. Uh, don't go trying to get smart, alecky, and get beat up. There's no benefit to it. It's nice to make a statement like that rather than asking the question, are you a peace officer or a policy enforcer? Because, you know, God's peace to you, sir. Yeah. Sounds well, good. It's also, uh, see, once, you, once you, depending on how you respond as 
as the man or the woman, whatever, um, then, see, because they have no right to see anything from you, right? You can still have a, all the identification, all the government stuff that's issued, but they have no right to see it. So basically you're questioning their authority to actually see what they want to see. And if they do want to see it, then you've got all the stuff in place, you know, all the, all the bonding and all the liens and all the stuff in place so that what they do see, if they do pull up your name or anything on the computer, and where it's getting to point now where there's a lot of people that they see, they just run the license plate or they, you know, whoever yeah. the name is, and they just go, okay. Just let it and go. And that's the green flag, right? Yeah, yeah. And people, like we used to talk about flying under the radar, right? And, and Rob pointed out that you don't want to be under the radar. That's where the enemy flies. Well, you want to be a big green spot on the radar, so they go, just leave that guy alone. It's like and hunting, and we're, we're, we're not the, the, we're too big. Bright orange. We're right. wearing bright, well, bright orange. orange. Waving at you, buddy. Call me a bear. It's an evolving police state, right? So they're always... They're looking at everyone now as a suspect. Everyone's guilty before anyone, yeah, yeah. even if they say the opposite. Especially so since 9-11. You have to show well, the them. The war was declared on yeah, us. Yeah, filing the paperwork is letting them know, hey, I'm not an anarchist, I'm not anti-government, I'm pro-good government, I'm just waiting for it to show up, and it's not really around. So, so I'm going to leave the party for now. If good government shows up, hey, I might just come back. Exactly. But for now, like, I, you know, paying income tax so that people can go to be killed in Afghanistan yeah. doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make logical sense, right? Not at all. 